In this video, I'm going to go over the cash flow analysis of the last rental property I bought. So this property is in an appreciating market. It's an O2, four bed, two bath, and it's about 2,100 square feet. A uh, pretty standard house. So as far as the numbers, I paid 277 for it. I put 10% down and had closing cost of about 5,500. This is just the fees for the loan and the title this doesn't include prepaids or uh, anything else for the rehab it'll end up being about six grand the work needed is right here so basically just a paint and a couple bedrooms miscellaneous ceiling and areas a co applying caulking and silicone uh, and and then painting the outside since it's about 10 years old and i don't want it to start chipping uh, and then I want to stain the fence and the normal rental property requirements such as keyless deadbolt, smoke alarms, etc. right here. So here's the total amount after tax is about six grand. The majority of it is in just flooring, so 500 for carpet removal and after tax amount of about 4,200 for the luxury vinyl planks. So as far as the analysis, uh, total invested including the rehab plus the closing cost plus the down payment will come to about just under 40 grand. Uh, I got the loan for 249 and I got a really good rate since this was a principal residence loan, not an investment loan, so two and uh, seven eighths. And this is a 30 year loan, so the payment comes about to $1,000. The annual taxes, non-exempt taxes are about 5,500. So in my area, you have exempt and non-exempt taxes. Uh, the non-exempt doesn't give you any benefit for being a homeowner. So. I'm, uh, so I'm analyzing this as if it's uh, a rental from day one. Uh, insurance is pretty cheap considering the value right here. Again, this is because this is homeowner's insurance and not fire insurance. This will go up to about 14 or 1500, maybe more uh, once I convert it to rental. The taxes and insurance total almost seven grand and the PMI is only about $40 a month. Right now, the rent is about 1850. When I rent this out in about seven to eight months, the rents will be about 1900 or 1950. So I'm just keeping this to be conservative. So the total uh, PITIA, so everything right here as far as a payment is equal to 1640 roughly. And for expenses, I put 5% to repair and cap X each and a uh, property management is always 10% in my area and I'm assuming 10% vacancy throughout the year so that's uh, it's not an expense it's just lack of income so same thing the net is the same uh, so when you add all of these expenses uh, to the rent income it comes out to negative three hundred and forty five dollars basically so not very good but I put just 10 percent down so i wouldn't expect to be good and as far as this property all the systems were new in it so this capex expense is probably higher than it would be so this house had a brand new roof this was replaced uh, like two months before i bought the house and the hvac was only one year old at the time the paint is uh, around 10 years old i don't technically need to paint the outside uh, but i just don't want it to get to the point of failing the inside the carpet definitely needed to be replaced uh, so that so I knew that going in but everything else is fine no foundation issues the lawn was very well kept it had nice St. Augustine grass uh, the fence was okay no cracks in the driveway or anything on the inside the water heater was only a few years old that's nice and uh, the inside appliances like the microwave and the oven were also only a couple years old so as far as cap X is this was an excellent deal in my opinion and uh, all the work I can basically do myself. So that cuts out the labor, even though I should account for that. Uh, I'm not going to, so I'm not renting it out while I'm doing the work. I'm not worried about that. The other thing is, is uh, being kind of like a B or B plus type of property, I'm gonna get very good tenants. So hopefully the repair is also lower than 5% per year. Uh, with better quality tenants, they tend to treat properties better. So that helps with the cash flow. And because this district also has very good schools, you can see the taxes are really high, uh, relatively speaking. For most pla for most states, this is a pretty high tax bill. Most of that goes to the uh, the school district, uh, and these have really high-ranking schools. So that should attract a nice family with kids that stay for many years. 
So also hopefully the vacancy is much lower. So as far as considering everything, I'm going to consider the uh, full net amount. This market consistently appreciates 10% a year. Fingers crossed it doesn't crash right after I buy it. Uh, and I'm going to consider principal pay down going into it. With this very low interest rate, there's quite a bit being paid back to the principal. And uh, the potential tax savings with all the deductions, especially the depreciation uh, deduction since there isn't really an, an actual expense there. So here's the, uh, the projections. So I have it going from year 0 to 30. And I have rent starting out at the 1850. Uh, and here are the taxes and all the expenses right here. But to make this more realistic, I put a 2% growth on rents, a 3% growth on taxes, and a 3% growth on insurance. And of course, this is just 30% of the rent, so this increases accordingly by the same amount. So if you look at, say, this after just one year, you have the rent increasing a little bit, as well as the expenses. And uh, after that first year, I paid it down about 6000 5500 or so. So then my loan equity goes from my down payment to uh, 33000 So I've paid it down 53 oh. <laughs> I forgot that I put the uh, principal pay down right here. So this is the actual amount that I'm paying down per year. You can see it increases because uh, the loans are front loaded, meaning you pay more interest up front and then more principal later on. Uh, with 10% appreciation, it's gone from a roughly 280 value to 308 in just one year. And that's just the market appreciating. So if I compare my equity at the buy to what it is, uh, what it's worth a year later, I have 64,000 in equity uh, because of the really big negative cash flow number it's uh, actual cash flow is negative uh, 4200 4300 and uh, when you add all that together you can see that this all this negative cash flow is really small compared to all the other benefits that I mentioned over here right here so uh, you can see the net worth changes by adding the, uh, the appreciation plus, plus the principal pay down plus the uh, potential tax savings uh, of the, uh, the, the depreciation deduction assuming a 22% tax bracket. So it's actual, so it might seem on paper to be negative almost 4,300, but uh, if the net worth increases almost 32,000, I'm not really worried about it. As long as I could support this projected loss, then I'm fine with uh, this increasing my net worth this much. I mean, this is huge. So here's the cumulative net worth change year over year. So this is just the, all the previous years before it. And this is unrealized gain because obviously I can't uh, realize it until I sell it. And uh, you can see that this is the average of uh, all the years before it as well. So the average gain over the from year zero to seven, the average return on investment of my initial small uh, investment up here is uh, pushing 133 percent. It gets up to almost 140 uh, in year four and then goes down a bit the more I pay it off and then here's the end of the loan and then it's cash flowing completely and the rents have uh, almost doubled by that point. I wanted to show the uh, settlement statement here just so you could see where I got my numbers. So the total title fees are 2400 total lender fees are these combined right here. You see some of them are points. Unfortunately I can't write these points off even if it is my principal residence just because it's uh, more beneficial to take the standard deduction than itemize them. So I won't be able to use those. But uh, you can see initial escrow payment right here. Oops. And uh, the only prepaid are basically insurance and the prepaid interest uh, for the first month until I start making payments. And uh, as far as the uh, basis of the property, here's the, uh, the outline right here. So I had all the, uh, the settlement fees that I could uh, add to the basis and uh, get the percentage uh, allocated toward the building and I end up with the unadjusted basis for the, uh, the building right here. Divide that by the class life of 27 and a half years uh, and the annual depreciation is be about $8,300 and the loan origination costs that I could uh, amortize per year is only about $90 unfortunately. I'm gonna try to segregate some of the assets in here since these are just appliances and they're relatively small. So I'm going to see if I could use 100% bonus depreciation uh, this first year because uh, it's not really going to affect the basis of the building but this is basically just free money right here that I'm not going to have to pay taxes on. 
I might not do this just because it could increase the risk of an audit, especially just doing this on my own without a CPA. But again, all this is a, a phantom expense that it's not actually coming out of my pocket, but I'm not paying taxes on this amount. This comes directly off of my income to offset it. So these are the numbers. Uh, the cash flow analysis looks really bad on paper. These are all very big red numbers, but considering everything else, once you sell this property, uh, you'll be netting almost $5 million. Granted, you will have to recapture uh, the depreciation on uh, the basis. So that's going to be about 250, 230 on this house. You have to pay ordinary income taxes on that. And then of course the capital gains, uh, who, who knows how, what it's going to be 30 years from now, assuming it's 20%, you still net a huge chunk of this 5 million. You're still netting over 3 million uh, just from the appreciation. So that is my analysis of this property. Uh, I'm looking forward to renting it out. Thanks for watching.